I'm home court, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? I'm home court, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? They ain't believing me in the beginning. Who wanna hang around now they see me winning? I'm home court, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? Yo, yo, what's good? It's Big Court of the Holding Court Podcast. What's going on with your producer, Ken? And it's another day, Hollywood, you know. Yeah, you already know, man. We back in this joint, dog, doing what we do. Man, today we have a very, very special guest, uh, Hollywood legend, uh, real talk, Hollywood legend. And I don't say that lightly. This guy, I actually grew up on him. I actually grew up watching him, which would make this interview that much more fun and that much easier. <laughs> we got the homie. Well, let me say this. Y'all have seen him in some of the biggest films, uh, most memorable films, cult classics. Uh, if you want to talk about uh, the movie Life, you want to talk about... Uh, Joanna Man, uh, TV show Sparks. Scooby Doo, uh, Street Scooby Fighter, Doo. Harlem Nights, Harlem Friday the 13th, Return Friday of the Living the 13th. Dead, yeah. uh, Lethal Weapon 3, uh, Pluto Nash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got the homie, Miguel A. Nunez, Nunez. Jr. What's up, brother? Yes, What's going on with you, brother? I'm good, man. I've been watching your podcast. You know, I, was, I watched a couple of episodes. And, I know, appreciate that. I said, you know what? Let me go see what homeboy talking about. I appreciate that. Sorry I had to follow on the heels of another big one I just did. So. <laughs> no, nah, it's all good. It's all, all right, good. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time coming. But, man, you had a, a very uh, eclectic and, and successful career, bro. And it's funny. I just want to say, man, it's an honor having you here because it's crazy as a kid. As a kid watching you, you know what I'm saying? Like the first time that I can remember seeing you on TV is uh Jason. Friday thirteenth. Friday the thirteenth. And you, you, first you movie. Yeah, and you were uh, you know, Michael Jackson esque. You know what I'm saying? You had your Jerry Curl and shit. Wet. I don't know if that was your real hair. No, that was my real hair. Yeah, you just wet that shit, put some lustre no, no, silk no, on no, it. No, 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 no. I just put the, the juice in it. Okay, okay. You know, you, know, you, put, you put the juice in it and then yeah. you just shaking that shit was yeah, good. But I had good hair though. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. So that was the first time that I actually saw you. I can remember being a kid in the 80s watching that movie. And it was something about you. You know, you just had a a, a presence on the screen. And I ain't I ain't bullshitting you. That's real shit. Man, I I was just fresh off the street homeless. Yeah. yeah. And got that job. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just really? said, yeah. I was, wow. I, I just got the job and I never done anything before. And all I said, it was like, they want you to do it. And I, I went in there and I just said the same thing. I, I live by that principle today. Yeah. I, I never been in an acting class, none of that shit. Wow. I was like, okay, but it, it it doesn't matter. And I just said, if I do, okay, well, I'm gonna get stabbed. If I do what I would really do right. in that situation, if I think, react, feel exactly what I would do in that real situation, then I then I'll do it. And that's all I went in there and did. I didn't try to play, hey, come on, you yeah. know, this tough guy tried to yeah, get yeah. some persona on television. Yeah. I didn't have any preconceived notions about how I was gonna look in there. Hey, who is that? <laughs> you know all of that I didn't have any yeah. of that on any of that yeah. I just went in there and said I'm going to do exactly what I was doing if I was in there and I saw that and I was far back I would really and you, you start thinking a thing coming through and I was screaming crying that that's I feel what, what somebody would really do without having the Hollywood on right it. and the and, fact they had you in there taking the shit man having to take shit a lot of people <laughs> and a lot of people and a lot of people didn't notice that uh, I didn't even wipe myself when it got out <laughs> <laughs> hey but it was like you, you was pimp-esque Cause the way you was like, bitch, yeah. don't make me come out there. Yeah. <laughs> I had the Jerry Curly and, shit. And, and, and the director, I ain't telling me to sing a song. And mm -hmm. I sung something. I, I think I think I sung sitting on the dock of the bay. Yeah. And he said, oh no, yeah. no, no, it can't be a song that because we have to pay for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so that, clear that. Ooh, baby, <laughs> ooh, baby. I just made that shit up right on the spot. Damn. So you improvise a lot. <laughs> yeah. 99% okay. of the time. Okay. Okay. And especially like I'm I'm doing a new show right now called um Cocaine Sisters. Yeah. It's gonna be one of the most powerful dramas, and I'm playing a bad guy. Really? Leader. It's like family business on steroids. Really? And I'm playing this kind of like the Ernie Hudson character in this. Okay, okay. And the director's yeah. letting me kill it. Yeah. Okay. I guarantee it's gonna Shout be. Shout out a to Shardell. Yeah. Yeah, Shardell. I, 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 I talked to homie Kimbo. about that. Yeah, yeah. Urban Matt. Yeah, yeah. Steven. Yeah. So let's let's drag it back, man. Let's. I know you said this. We talked about this just a little while ago, and I we. But for our viewers, you know what I mean. Let's start from the beginning a little bit, bro. 
I, this is one thing I always wondered, and I want to ask you because I've never seen you talk about it. What's your ethnicity? My father's from Dominican Republic. My okay. mother's from North Carolina. Okay. Deep, deep, deep North Carolina. Oh. Okay. My mom ran away from home when she was 16 to go to New York to be an actress. Okay. She ended up meeting James Brown and they had a relationship. That's why she ended up, she's a writer of It's a Man's World, James Brown's biggest hit. Right. My mom would get dropped off by James Brown, picked up by Jackie Robinson, dropped off by Jackie Robinson, picked up by Muhammad Ali, dropped off Muhammad Ali, and then picked up by, by James Brown. This was like every single day. Wow. My mother was a stunningly, stunningly, stunningly beautiful, beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. And she looked kind of mixed. Okay. She had long hair and she wore go-go boots and all yeah. of that stuff they wore back then. And she ran away from home to New York to pursue her, her, her future in New York. And she landed in New York. She was actually on a show called Hullabaloo. Really? Yeah, it was like a first American bandstand kind of a show. Okay, okay. And she was one of the go-go girls that was up in those little boxes. Yeah. They had a little girl go girls, and she was uh, one up in the little boxes. That's when she met all of these guys, because then you know all of them would come on the show as entertainers. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had us, and and she had me. I have seven brothers, one sister. Okay. And when we got like five, five, three or five, mm -hmm. she gave us to our grandmother in North Carolina because my grandmother had a farm and needed boys. Okay. Okay. So I ended up raised on a farm in North Carolina. Damn. Yeah. So did you grow up with your dad? No. Nope. Never oh, met okay. him. You never met him. Oh. Never okay. Met him. Have you ever seen a picture of him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is he still living? I don't know. Oh wow! You've never tried, even with your success, you never tried to reach out. How to him? could I? What I would love to know. How could I? What do you mean? How can I reach him? I tried to New York. You know how I many mm -hmm. Miguel A. Nunez is in New York? About 200,000. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> Damn. It's That's about 200,000. I actually went to a place. She said, oh, you know, in New York, they like my mom been in that place for 62 years. Uh-huh. Well, she lives here now. Uh-huh. Um, and they lived there forever. So she took me to the lady's grandma. He said, this was his grandmother. I'm sure she's still there. And we knocked on the door and they were Spanish speaking, but they wouldn't open the door. Damn. You speak Spanish? No. Nah. You never tried to? No. You've been I should. To the, have you been to the DR? Never been to the DR. Okay. And I know I got relative there. Exactly. I'm scared I might end up on top of one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So the Dominican, um, those girls are beautiful. Man, yeah. my ex, my ex wife's Puerto Rican. Kid, my kids are Puerto Rican. Yeah. She got DR. My ex-wife was here for us Puerto Rican. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I love the creepy. I've been to the DR a bunch. DR right, everybody I know been to the yeah. DR except me. I'm DR's dying to go. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely... I just said I'm gonna make a trip there. I'm definitely gonna say because I know I got my father. All I know is he worked at a zipper factory in the Dominican Republic. It's on my birth certificate, mm -hmm. so that's all I know about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you and your siblings share the same father? No. Okay. No. Okay. So just that's just your. I none of us got the same daddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'm not privy to say, but I got brothers whose fathers are huge singing legend stars right now. Wow. Did you name some of them already? What do you mean? No, I've oh, okay. never done it. Okay. But one of them whose father, and he doesn't own one of the biggest music stars on the world, planet. Really? And every time he goes through the airport, anyway, even if he came here with me, you'd be like, I have some autographs. Like he spit him out. Another brother, because my mom was on Hollabaloo. Okay. And it's weird because you see that person singing, as a sketch and old tapes. Mm -hmm. Next year, my brother was born. <laughs> you see, one of the other guy said yeah. that. Next year, another brother was born. So they all got. Ah. Except me, my dad was just some Dominican who ran into her. But uh -huh. but we never we we um we don't have the same fathers. Okay, okay. So what was your upbringing like over there in uh on the farm? Shit, my upbringing on the farm was. It was like the color purple, mm -hmm. <laughs> really. I mean, we worked hard. I mean, yeah. I worked, I picked cucumbers, I cropped tobacco, suck, suck a tobacco, stick tobacco, hung tobacco, truck tobacco. Mm -hmm. We were the ones you drive down the street and you see those people working in the fields because mm -hmm. my grandmother was poor and they had all five of our brothers, mm -hmm. right? Plus she had five aunts. She had daughters. My aunt, my grandmother had daughters. Mm -hmm. That's why she wanted the boys. Wow. So it was all of us in the house. So they would pick and you they'd sleep. I mean, you wake up in the morning, I don't care what is it, and it's five, six in the morning, get up. Mm -hmm. And then you next thing you know, you're in the back of the car and they take you and drop you in a cucumber field with the rolls about from here to the Staples Center. Damn. And you just got to work all day to six o'clock. We come back to get you. Wow. So I'm assuming <laughs> that the race relations there was a whole lot different. When I was growing up, yeah. the race relations was just like this line right here. Mm -hmm. It was like a line right here. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up and being in like the, the day we go to, I think fifth when we went to, to uh, um, 
Mr. Woodard. Um, and we were looking out the window, mm-hmm. and I remember they were marching in our in our in our uh, mm-hmm. you know uh, 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 civil rights march. Yeah. Right down the three, da, da, and we were sending all our friends, white friends, we all that, and we had no clue what was going on. It was like right before our generation, mm. right before. But I mean, of course, we were aware of it. Yeah. But I never experienced that. I were no, actually, I know of really? growing up. In North Carolina. So you never got called a nigga or a Oh, I got or... called a nigga a lot of time, but oh, I got okay. called niggas just many times from black folks. Yeah. I got to, But I I'm t- saying specifically with that. I give you the only time I ever yeah. ever remember ever being called a nigga in North Carolina was we used to go to the train tracks. Mm-hmm. And this is ignorant. And because white folks lived on that side of the train track and the yeah. nice houses and black folks lived on that side. So we get up on Saturday, we go to the train track and take the rocks and go and see how many white folks' windows we could bust out. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I got one. <laughs> Trying to break out their windows. Yeah. In the nice houses. Right? Wouldn't even think about what we were doing. Right. And we would do it over and over and over. And one time we were just throwing and throwing. And we turned to the look. We were probably 11, 12, or 13. Mm-hmm. And we turned and looked. And there's two white boys coming. And they got dogs. <laughs> and we see them. And we jump down. And they let like this. And let the dogs go. And we start running. And them dogs go. <laughs> and we couldn't. We saw we weren't going to make it. So we all climbed back on top of the train. Mm-hmm. And they were probably 16, 17. They could have done anything they wanted. Mm-hmm. And they came down and they said, get out of here, you little niggers. Mm-hmm. Get out of here, you little niggers. Damn. And we said, okay, we came down. We were like, huh? And they had the dogs. They were like, yeah. And they said, if you ever come over here again, ever, we're going to let these dogs eat you up. Now get out of here. I'm going to count to 10. And all I know is by the time they said five, we were about seven miles away. <laughs> we never <laughs> went back. That's the only time. Damn. And I do remember times sitting you know, with some friends, and you could mm-hmm. see, you know, the father, he's sitting on the porch like this, old mm-hmm. white man, and you can see the big Confederate flag in the back of his truck, mm-hmm. shotgun, and sometimes you see him leaving, and he have a white robe on the bottom, he have another part in the thing going to his truck, mm-hmm. and, and they call me Michael growing up, my mm-hmm. name's Michael. So, and I remember, um, he's sitting on the porch getting ready to go, and he goes, Michael, boy, if you don't get your black ass out of that damn street before you get hit, Mm-hmm. And then go into his truck to a, to a Ku Klan rally. Wow. But protecting, you know, that kind of stuff. Damn. Oh, yeah. that's wow. I mean, that's the only time I've ever, none of that ever happened. Wow. So when did you leave? I ran away as soon as I graduated from what high What made you run away? I, I said I was going to run away from the time I was three years old. I said, I'm going to run away to Hollywood. I'm going to be a movie star. Every day of my uh-huh. life, I have a die every day, everybody who will listen. When I started school, I had a jean jacket. Mm-hmm. And I took a magic marker and I wrote Hollywood on the back of it. Because I told everybody, the moment I'm going to go to Hollywood, I'm going to be on TV, I'm going to be a movie star. I guarantee they were like, how is it possible? Every single person who ever, ever, I told about this, first thing out of their mouth was, first of all, you're too skinny. You're too skinny, you're too ugly, and you're too black. It's never going to happen. That's wow. why I heard from everybody, including my mama. Wow. You make, you make A's and B's in school. You, you can do anything. You're smart. But they were actually really kind of thinking about, you know, yeah, you know, there's yeah. agents, managers, actors, right, right, 100,000 right. in New York, Chicago, right. how your skinny little poor black yeah. ass from Wilson, North Carolina, going to get in front of them. I said, listen, I guarantee you, trust me, I know it. I promise you, mm-hmm. I know it. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt there was no doubt in my mind whatsoever. Mm-hmm. None. My grand, we had lived in a big house, and I remember be, I, I was really, I only weighed 75 pounds when I graduated. Okay. High school. So I was skinny as hell my whole life. And you about what, five, ten, six feet? No, I was four eleven when I graduated. Oh shit! I grew in one summer. Okay. <laughs> and um, um, so I remember getting because the house was always packed, and I was so little and skinny, and you never could go in my grandmother's living room. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of making this the name of the book because I would always go in there and get behind the big chair, all the lights out, and go right behind the big chair and get the encyclopedia and look up Hollywood and read everything I could about you, you Hollywood. You showing your age, OG, with encyclopedia. Shit, nigga, I'm yeah. 63. I grew up with it too, though, the I'm encyclopedia. I'm 63, I ain't yeah. no secret. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, so, and, and I would look up Hollywood, uh-huh. and I would go, um, um, and look up all the address, and I would mm-hmm. write out, hey, my name is Miguel Nunez. I live at 640 Cemetery Street, Wilson, North Carolina. I want to be an actor, can you help me? And I would send off these letters, and no one in my entire family ever knew that. I would always run to the mailbox, and I would, let me get it, let me get it. They never knew I was waiting for a letter from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I graduated. I got I was working at Tobacco Warehouse. Uh-huh. I got my first check, like $127. And I had always planned what I was gonna do to summer. Da, 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 mm-hmm. I can use this money and save and do that. And I went, which was God, I think. I could go to Hollywood right now. Mm-hmm. I could do it right now. This should be enough. I said, if I don't do it right now, I'm gonna be stuck in Wilson now doing this my whole life. <sighs> 
do it. Fine. And I went to the supervisor. I said, I quit. And he mm -hmm. said, well, you have a week in the whole check. And we sent it to you. I said, send it to my grandparents. And I walked home, which is about here to the state center, but going through the woods, it's mm -hmm. 10 minutes. In a house that big, never, ever was it ever a point where nobody was home, especially my mm -hmm. grandfather, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Nobody was home. God. I made a bologna, three bologna sandwiches. I thought that'd get me to California. Mm -hmm. I wrote a note to my grandparents, said, I'm going to Hollywood to make something by myself. They knew I was always talking about it. And I went to the bus station, got on the bus, and that was it. Never, ever once did I think about, not even once, the seriousness of what I'd done. Never crossed my mind. And how old were you? 16. Wow. Okay. okay. You know why? Mm -hmm. I saw from being here, the finish line. Mm -hmm. I saw the finish line. I knew you the finish line. That, yeah. I knew exactly what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I saw it a long time ago when I told people, if you believe it strongly enough in yourself, nobody can tell you what you are capable or not capable of doing. Let no one, every single person in my entire life said it was impossible. Mm -hmm. Everybody. No one can determine what's your future but you. And period. So I just... And then I never, I saw the finish line. I didn't see all of the stuff in it I was right. going to go through. Right. And if they did a movie, it would be one of the biggest, most incredible things you've ever seen in your life. I landed at first, I, my, my bank was this. Yeah. Because I was so my blood to eat. That was my bank, my withdrawal to get something to eat. Damn. I slept behind the bus station, wake up with lice and fleas and all, lice Damn. on me. And then I ended up moving to the Union Rescue Mission where they sprayed you for poison to get the lice off. Mm -hmm. So how long did that struggle go? Well, how did you go? How long did you go through that? Well, I was at, at I, I lived in the streets for about, about three or four months. So I was sleeping. I was like, I, I looked like a kid still. So mm -hmm. I, I was sleeping under a park bench. It was raining. And some guy said, why are you out? He thought I was a little kid. And mm -hmm. He told me about the Union Rescue Mission. I ended up going to the Union Rescue Mission. There was a photo of me there, you know, mm -hmm. people who graduated. Mm -hmm. Not the mission now, but the nastiest mission in the history of the universe, what they had back in the 80s. And uh, it was just a church that lets you sleep in the pews and you wake up bums on you and that's when all of the, you know, the lights mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. And um, I ended up staying at Union Rescue Mission. I got a job at Cedar, at, at, I'm sorry, at Rancho Los Amigos Hospital in Downey, California as a physical therapist technician under the Cedar program they started back then. Okay. Because I was living at Union Rescue Mission. Then I ended up getting on welfare and they gave me a hotel at 1000 1, East 7th Street. It was called the, uh, the Ford Hotel downtown. Mm-hmm. I ended up staying there and I got uh, three meals a day at the Busy Bee restaurant. You wouldn't know ate there in a billion years. You wouldn't even mm -hmm. own that restaurant they just mm -hmm. gave it to you or the hotel, yeah. but it was something. Mm -hmm. And all I had to do was sign a voucher. Okay. Okay. And then I ended up getting, they stopped doing that because they put us on county job. They started a program called County Education or Training something. All the people who were getting welfare checks, no. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to be working at county facilities. They should bring that back, LA. Okay. Work at county facilities and picking up trash and different things. I worked as a physical therapist technician assistant, mm -hmm. but under the CEDA program, I was doing the same job as the therapists were doing, mm -hmm. but I was getting less money, but I was still making a lot of money. Right. And one day I told my supervisor, work, save my money up. By now I know you can go to Hollywood. Right. Oh, I didn't know you could go to Hollywood. Okay. That's why I spent so much time on Skid Row. Because when I went to the bus station and I said, can I get a ticket to Hollywood? And white man said, no, and my heart was racing. So I thought you had to be an actor to get into Hollywood. Damn. But what it was, <laughs> I was at the Trailway yeah. Station. Trailways went downtown to Six and Main at the time. Mm -hmm. Greyhound went to Hollywood. I didn't know that. Ah, uh, okay. And and I ended up, I thought I was going to get, I said, it was like, what you going to do when you get there? Oh, I'm going to meet somebody. I'm going to be a movie star. I thought I was going to see those lights on the movie star, right. lights and limousine. I just thought that. Mm -hmm. I landed on Skid Row right across from the bus, the, the worst street at that time in the entire United States. I gotta ask you, OG. So you never once thought to run back home and give up? It never got too hard? You never, it was never an option for you to go back home? It was never an option, but mm -hmm. I did. Everybody said you ever get, I remember there inside the mission, like I said, it was just a church where you go in and let, you get there before seven and a few mm -hmm. pews fill up, that's it. That's only all the homeless people they were let in. Mm -hmm. And there was a little, because I was the youngest one there at the time now, so everybody. But I was like, the, you come a young blood at mm -hmm. there. And I was like the youngest one. And I remember I would be up and everybody would be, uh, and it'd be late. And all the doors, could, the people going. I remember I would get up and walk around. And I went to behind the pew, because it was just an old church, mm -hmm. with one room. And there was, was an office. I guess it was where the pastor gets ready before he goes out. And it was empty in a long chair. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, shoot. I just laid back on there. And I remember doing this so many times. I would put, do like this. And I said, now you tell me if this is what you just said, because I like to say I, I don't think I did, but 
I would pray to God so hard, please, 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 God, let me be back home in my bed <laughs> and let me wake up. And it's always a dream. Yeah. Cause now I know I got to get some money. I was thinking, well, I can right. now I know what I got to do. I to come back with it. Right. And that's why I said, and I would wake up in the morning like this, and my hand would be numb because they would still be that tight. It's mm -hmm. like I did it all night praying. And I was. Were still, you in contact with your family? Nope. Wow. I was too embarrassed. I'm from a big family. I was like, no. The wow. first time I ever decided to, after I got that hotel, mm -hmm. to sign a voucher in the mail, I lied and said I had an I had an apartment, but it was just a county hotel. Damn. And then I still wouldn't call. Mm -hmm. I just I wrote. I got a note which I just found. And when I opened the note, and this is after about you know, six, seven months, the only thing the note said was, call home, fool. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> uh -uh. Well, yeah, that's she said, all it said was call home food. That was it. And I call home. I said, I got an apartment. Da, 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 right. and, right. and then that was it. So, so coming from the struggle, bro, I mean, at what point did you transition? Like, where was your first break? And when I say break, I mean, just I, I got getting you. to Hollywood, I understanding. I first break. Uh, audition. First break. Yeah. Uh, first break came, I was on a bus. And this is, you know, sometime later. Mm -hmm. I, I got an apartment and I ended up working at Rancho Los Amigos Hospital, told mm -hmm. I wanted to be an actor. She said, tell him, tell him you went into the army. That way, if it don't work out, you can get your job back. Mm -hmm. So I did that, paid my rent up for like four months, moved three of the other guys who were living in Skid Row there with me in the apartment in the Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So the rent would be almost the same. It's only $60 a month between mm -hmm. all of us. Yeah. Um, um, they didn't save any money, I did. I saved all my money, I moved everybody out. So now I'm living in Hollywood. And I'm on a bus once and this guy's going, and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And I talked just like this when I first got here. <laughs> I talked just like this, okay? Yeah. Now on Skid Row, in the mission, my name, nickname was was, was a, 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 a young blood. Uh -huh. To all my new ho uh, downtown homeless friends, my nickname was Country Boy. Mm -hmm. And um, cause I talked just like this. And I remember going, what's that? And he said, I said, what, I said, what, what is that? And he said, I'm an actor. And I said, okay. And then he, I said, my name is Miguel Nunez, 640 Cemetery Street, Wilson, North Carolina. I came, I want to be an actor. And he goes, and I said, what is you that? You gave he him said, the address every time? Yeah, <laughs> and I go, and I go, and I go this, this, he said, I swear that. he said, this is a resume. You're gonna have to, guys, can I see? He said, yeah, yeah, take it. You're gonna have to get a resume. You gotta get pictures, hey, da, 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 all of that shit, right? And then later on, I see him get out. It was a cattle call. Oh, okay. I, I didn't hear the word audition yet. And then I see him get out and I see cameras in the park. Uh -huh. So I go to the next stop. I go to a copy place, write his name out, put my name on his, his, uh, uh -huh. re, his, uh, um, um, buy a resume. Yeah. And I went back and got in line and got the lead in that commercial. It was a, a Gino's restaurant commercial, a national uh, commercial. Okay, okay. I ended up getting the lead in there. I was like, and I was telling the man, I ain't know nothing about talking your agent and this and this. And the guy come up and he was like, I said, that's the guy who told me. He was like, hey, you know this guy? He's like, you got it, da, da, da. He said, I'll take you to my agent. Yeah. So he took me to his agency, which was the Wilder agency, David Wilder and Ron Wilder. And um, actually Ron didn't work there. Ron actually drove the limo for uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, Dr. Jerry Buss, the owner of the Lakers. Yeah. So uh, David, Sign me. And I went in and I said, I wanted more of those cattle call things. I want to be in the movies. I want to be in the movies. I don't want to be on that, that the commercial thing. I want yeah. to be in the TV and the movie. He said, commercials are on TV. Yeah. And that's when you see the data. I said, oh, okay. Well, you can keep all of this money. Just get me on the movies and then the TV. He said, you know, I like you. I'm going to sign you. Of course he did. So he can get 10%. Yeah. And the next 47 auditions he sent me on, I probably got 42 of them. Wow. And I was on tour of duty, which was a drum. I got here in 80, 85, I think. Yeah. And no, 80. And Tour of Duty was, uh, came on in 87. I was on a um, drama for yeah. CBS, big drama for three years. So, OG, you never took acting classes. No. So how did you know the technique? How did you know about opening yourself up to the camera? Those little nuances. Oh, I learned all of that over okay. the years. Okay. I learned all that. But here's my thing. Uh -huh. I would always, always, every set I've ever been on since the beginning, want to know everything. Mm -hmm. I've got everybody running to lunch. Right. I keep my lunch there. I want to know everything. I can eat my lunch here while I learn. Right. I always wanted to learn everything. While other actors were, were doing their scenes, other actors would go back to their trailer mm -hmm. and chill and kick it. Mm -hmm. Me, I would just watch the other actors and watch the professional people. And I'd be like, and I'd watch how they did everything. Every single aspect of it. I've mm -hmm. always been curious about it. Wow. So of those 40 plus roles that you got, what do you feel like was your breakout where you actually felt like, okay, I kind of arrived? Tour of duty. Tour of duty. Absolutely. Okay. It was a big hit on CBS, at, mm -hmm. on CBS. Mm -hmm. And it was like uh, maybe 10 people. It's the same thing that happened on Spark. It was maybe, a, uh, actually it was a big cast because we were a platoon mm -hmm. in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And it was two, uh, two major leads was the two white boys. But then mm -hmm. after, the, just like in Sparks, the first episode was about Maxie. Right. And that episode, it was the first episode was about me getting taken under the tunnel in a Malcolm X mm -hmm. episode. Okay. So, so that's TV. Yeah. So, so what was your breakout movie? 
wise. Friday the thirteenth. Friday the thirteenth. Okay. Friday thirteenth, because the first one everybody yeah. saw it. So it was, so once your people back home seen it and they seen you on TV. It was over. Yeah. 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 I, they over. think you was rich and famous. Was, oh yeah. They, you make yeah. two dollars. They swear yeah, you yeah, rich. Yeah, yeah. If you're on TV, well that's how we all do back home. You make yeah. you see somebody on TV, now they're rich and you know. But yeah, they didn't know the, the union sag. They don't know they none of that. that. <laughs> that ain't for them to know. I like them thinking it. But I was blessed and you yeah. know, because tour of duty I I was able to take care of my grandparents, buy them home and cars, and mm-hmm. and they're both passed away now. But mm-hmm. God rest his soul. But I'm just so blessed that I was able to do the things because yeah, they sure. suffered and struggled yeah. so hard to raise their child children as well as yeah, my, uh, yeah. my brothers and sisters. Yeah, that's always a fulfilling feeling. That's always fulfilling because uh, same thing. My mother passed away in 2010, but I'm thankful that I was able to buy her house before she passed away. Well, my my grand yeah. my mother's here, but my grandmother and mm-hmm. my grandfather were like our mother because you know. I yeah. was raised by him, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so now you've arrived, right? So at what point do you do you start engaging and indulging in the spoils of Hollywood? You know what I mean? In terms oh, nigga, of- I turned out the 90s. <laughs> I turned out, I was a, Dr. Jerry Buss, the owner of the Lakers. Uh-huh. He was like my godfather. Oh, okay. I met him and I, we were he best. He seemed like he was turned up. I still have seven championship rings. Yeah, you know? okay, wow. You know, I get one every year. I got mm-hmm. 2000 Jeannie Buss, who's my sister. Nice. And um, Linda Ram is like my sister. Uh-huh. Uh, I can go to any games, family seats. They've been like my family. They were like, the, he was like the only family I have. He took me under his uh-huh. wings. I was his, like his personal assistant wow. all throughout the Lakers. Look at every tape. I got tape me and him walking in to see, to, to hug uh, uh, Dr. J. Yeah. I got tapes of me and him walking in, in the locker room. Everywhere you see him, every championship so me, trophy, I'm right there. So I let me I, ask you. So I think real, I know you about that. So, oh, you, you know where I'm going with it? Yeah, I think so. So what do you think about the new series? What new series? Um, the winning time. Winning time. Okay, let's yeah. talk about that. Let's talk about that. We want. I talked to a wrong. lot of people. Uh, 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 um, my notes about winning time is, um, it's filled with a lot of inaccuracies. Really, and it's it's filled with so many inaccuracies. Doctor Bus, first of all, never cursed. Mm. They had him a scene where he was cursing and doing all this mm-hmm. stuff. I was with him every day for damn near twenty five years. Never ever once have I seen Jerry Bus cursed. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of stuff that I I think. If they had to just based it on the truth, mm-hmm. it would be a thousand times better. So why do you think they didn't reach out to like people like you? They did Magic reach out Johnson. to people like me. Okay. They reached out to pe- people like me, but you know, mm-hmm. um, I, I, they, Jeannie and 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 the Lakers are my family, mm-hmm. and and I and I understand that it wasn't sanctioned by the uh, the uh, NBA or the family. Oh, and it, yeah, okay. not at all. Okay, yeah, and okay. and I just. I just felt if I could have came in and fixed the inaccuracies if right. they were willing to do that. But I think they're doing it for, so for drama me, entertainment that's purposes. That's what I was about to say. So from what perspective are they telling this story? Who's telling it? Are they just... they? Well, they have somebody in there mm-hmm. uh, who was doing it for them that I know was supposed to be a consultant. Mm-hmm. But uh, what they don't know is the person that they had to do the consulting, he was there, but he wasn't in there in the in the true mix where he would know the stuff that they're asking right, him. Right. You know, he know how to say what happened and what he thought was, and yeah. then they can take that and dramatize it. Yeah. But the only person who was really, really there was mm-hmm. me. As magic as anybody, period, with the Lakers. So why you the think they only didn't person who could ever there. know every single thing that happened during that time uh-huh. is me. Hands down. Everybody tell you. So why do you, Magic think, would tell you that. why do you think they didn't put your likeness in there then? I have no clue. That's crazy. You cannot have that time without me. Right. Look at every photo. It's mm-hmm. impossible. Mm. Where where did you first meet? Like I know that you would, but like how did that enter? How did I meet Dr. Buzz? I met Dr. Buzz. I was actually was an actor. And every time I would get a job, you know, um, you know, I'd be working, warehousing mortgage companies, all of these big companies, and I'd be working, and then I get a page, oh shit, I got an audition tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So I had to make it up an excuse. Good. Go. Working. Thursday. Oh, shit. I got a call back. Friday. I had to make up an excuse. Eventually, I would end up getting fired from all my jobs because I would, you know, call <laughs> yeah. back. I, I couldn't. So somebody said, why don't you get a job as a season seat salesman for the Los Angeles Lakers? Oh, okay. So why? why? They said, because you make your own hours. I was like, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I could become a season C salesman. I can work when I want and still, you know, mm-hmm. do this. Because the Lakers are the hottest thing, number one. So I get to the office, it's like this. It's a big, big room where, you know, all the people on the phone calls and stuff like that. And I I would always go to the game and look inside the forum club and look through the 
you know, through the partition, see Dr. Bus, yeah. his table, just like this, all the way down there a mile and all the way across a mile on this side and this side. And I was like, whoa, all the celebrities, all those beautiful people in there, wow. You know, yeah. you can't go in, no, you can't go in there, you go in there. Oh, okay, okay. Always. Yeah. So I get there and then and the guy's telling us about the job and then he said, oh, and one of the incentives, whoever is the number one season seat salesman for that week, you know, this was during the season, get to go have dinner at Dr. Buss's table and go to the game. The fuck? <laughs> All that time, there is no way on God's earth anybody is going to sit at that table but me. As soon as he told me that I could be in that room with them celebrity and Dr. Buss, I won for the next three months in a fucking row. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't sleep, eat, or drink till I sold more than everybody. I go to the board, see how many on the board? I won every time. So this is what happens. This table this way, this is the door to get in, over, right over here. All the way down there, Jerry's way at the end with all the celebrities, because that table went this way. Dr. Buss sat in the middle. Celebrity, 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 celebrity. And this table right here, which, sorry, this mm -hmm. table here connected to Dr. Buss's table. So mm -hmm. Dr. Buss is here. This table, the first two seats right here across, celebrity, 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 because they were right in front of him. Mm -hmm. So they could be like that. So now I'm there. And they say, oh, and other rules. Dr. Buss said, you can bring any girl you want, but no guys. Really? Good. And so I was always looking at Jerry Bush like beautiful girl. I said, yeah. okay. So, so he was got, a, so he was truly a cock hound, like how they how they how described him. Okay. <laughs> so I would go and I would go to I, out the club and I find a pretty girl. I said, you want to go to Laker game? Everybody did. Yeah. So next time I win. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting at the last seat back here mm -hmm. with the most beautiful girl. I win next week. I go out. She said, I want to go to Laker game. Psh, I took you last time. All right. Then I go find another beautiful girl. Took her to the game with me. Then they said, Dr. Buss said you could bring two girls. Oh, good. So I started doing the same thing. <laughs> Next thing I know, I look all the way down to I see Dr. Buss go, Greg. He calls his sister over. He goes, he goes, Greg goes. I see him look at me. <laughs> and he goes, I know you said that's the season six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you said that, yeah. right? <laughs> went again, went again. Next thing I know, uh, I get a call in the office um, and, the, and the supervisor hated it. He got a call from Jerry's <laughs> office. He wants to invite you to the game. I ain't, it wasn't even a contest. I ain't even done nothing. Damn. Right? So my seat went from here, 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 to right in front of JB, and it stayed that way. To so here. so it wasn't about your ticket sales. It was about you bringing the women. No, it was about my ticket sales oh, okay. in the beginning. Okay. It, in the beginning. Yeah. But when he said, hey, look, this guy brings pretty girls yeah. him all the time. I don't give a damn <laughs> if he brings tickets or not. He can come. Right. That's what it became. Right. And then, actually, I started getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. with, the, with the guy in there because I was going to the games without mm -hmm. and he was saying it was messing everything up. So JV said, you know what? Forget the seven season season. You just come on and be my assistant. And then that's how I became my assistant. Wow. So Best what, friend, actually. So what was some of the... Because he seemed to be a live wire per... Jerry was the, the nicest, kindest person. Mm -hmm. People don't even know. Jerry Buss's box was way up in the top, mm -hmm. right? Jerry, with all the people in the box, all those black folks up there who couldn't afford the real the good tickets, Jerry Buss said, and I probably, well, I can say it now because he's not alive because he didn't want it to be told while he was alive. He probably sent 50 full scholarship kids to, to college since I've known him. And they wow. weren't supposed to tell him. Any of these people would come over and say, Dr. Buss, and it'd be a pack, pack box with security, and let, let them come through. And they would come and say, if you walk to Jerry and say, listen, this is my child. My child is in the sixth grade in, in, in Compton and, and wherever, mm -hmm. and this is his grade. And if it was that, Jerry would say, I'll tell you what. You have him get this to an A, you have him get this to that, you have him get this to that, and then da da da, right? And some people come out there and Jerry be like, all of this? Okay, all right, cool. What's your name? Get her information. Anybody, he would pay so much. Wow. He did so much for so many people. He never cursed. He was always there when you need him. The nicest, kindest playboy in yeah. history. So what's some of the, I know you, what's some of the craziest shit you witnessed with the partying with, with Dr. Buss? The like the one that sticks out, like the craziest shit that you can tell, that you can say. Yeah, I ain't nothing I can crazy that I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, something you can tell. I mean, being in JB's jacuzzi with, you know, uh -huh. uh, 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 some NBA players with them big ass legs and about 10 girls. Okay. Damn near 50 times during the season. <laughs> that kind of shit. Um, so, so the parties was, so how did you, 
because I know this is the 80s. So how did you keep from spiraling? You know what I mean? Like getting caught up with the coke and the drugs to where it really took you, you know what I'm saying? I was so around it. But my Mm -hmm. thing is, I've never been the addicted. I've tried it all. Right. Right. You know, I've I've been Rick James, one of my best friends. I was right there with Rick James. I I was in his hotel when he come in and go, I got power. Yeah. And then I'd be in the room (laughs) watching him and Dave Lee Roth in there just all night long, just watching this. Because that wasn't my thing. Mm hmm. It mm-hmm. wasn't my thing. And and even when I tried, it didn't do nothing for me. Right. This made me like crazy and yeah. I didn't understand it. Yeah. You know, so it, I've never been a an addictive person. I can stop you know, cigarettes now, but mm-hmm. it was never anything that I was addicted to except mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. And 90% of the time, I had the same energy uplift as 90% of them that use coke right, and other right, stuff right. for it. Right. I was like that 24 hours a day. <laughs> I mean, I'm like that right now. I don't care how much you do, you'll still not have more energy than me yeah. than from the moment I wake up. Yeah. So I didn't need it. I, I didn't feel it. It didn't do anything for me. Mm-hmm. I loved weed and I smoked weed and that was mm-hmm. my thing. Okay. But okay. back then you, you, you had to have it. Right, right. Because, yeah, you know, yeah. every club you want, first thing out of girl's mouth, you got a tit? Got any tit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... So we got to, so let's talk about this. Um, so you get your big break. You've done um, a Jumpin' Jack Flash, which I know you got a little bit roll in. One of my favorite movies, by you the gotta way. You got to see that. That's when I was kind of homeless when you yeah. see me about mm-hmm. four foot 11, uh, mm-hmm. uh, 18 pounds. And- it's one of my favorite movies. Um, you know, Friday the 13th, you did Tour Duty. But let's, let's kick up to Harlem Nights. So here at Harlem Nights, you are able to share the screen with legends from Eddie Murphy, uh, different um, generations, you know, Richard Pryor, Red Fox, Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall was on the come up with you as well, who I, I assume is your peer, you know what I mean, in that in that respect. Um, what was that experience like and how did you land Harlem Nights? I'm friends with Eddie. Okay. Friends with Eddie and uh, good old I, nepotism. Yeah, I, I yeah. had the um I had the role of the Arsenio role. He wasn't in the movie. Okay. Arsenio wasn't in the movie. Arsenio just happened to come by that night. Okay. And he said, wow. hey, why don't you be in the car too? You guys be brothers. Wow. And I said, yeah, let's do it. So Arsenio wasn't yeah. even in the scene. They dressed him that night. He came. And the little guy with the gun. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't in it either. Wow. He was a prop guy bringing out the gun. It's what he's going to do with that little shit. Matter of fact, put him in there. Yeah. And yeah. He set the whole so that, so that So that scene right there when he when when Arsenio hit him with the hat said, stop shooting that little All shit. That, is that improv? 100%. Arsenio really? turned it out. Really? All that. <laughs> we got All yeah. that. Arsenio killed it yeah Arsenio killed it but you gotta give Eddie Murphy a profit because prop prop props because every single thing and he created so many moments mm-hmm. that weren't there just mm-hmm. hey you know what do this and do that yeah. a lot of the best moments that was just him yeah smartest genius ever ever in this business mm-hmm. people don't know oh yeah Eddie's they, a beast no I mean yeah. I mean just intellectually mm-hmm. probably one of the smartest Dr. Bus is probably the smartest person I ever met I would absolutely say Eddie it's probably second to Dr. Bus. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's so crazy because even like I said, as when I was thinking about you coming to the show, I was like, damn, OG got even just your presence has always felt even with the most my, you know, minute things that you may do. Like you broke my nose, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like little shit that you do is it, it stands out even. You know what I mean? Even it's not what you yeah. get. It's what you do with what you right. get. Right. That's the bottom line. You can have one little line and then you could just, if I said, you broke my nose, then no, it would have been mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not what you get, it's what you do with what you get. Yeah. Period. How many, how many days were you filming on Harlem Nights? God, I, I don't even remember, bro. It's yeah. so long ago. I'm saying, did you get a, a chance to fraternize with- Oh, with, yeah, yeah. I was there with Rich Pryor and all that. Yeah. But you got to remember, I'm from North Carolina. To me, right now, I now, now I, I think about, I was on the set with these letters da, 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 mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. That like that. Mm-hmm. If when I was on there, I would have been like this. I was like this. If Richard Pryor would have been standing right me and say, "Hey, what's your name?" I would have been like Miguel. Uh, uh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I to me, I, I was like that. To me, uh huh. I've never been, you know, like to anybody because I've always, even every time I went at something, everybody say, "Dude, you, you just got this. You, you, how you feel about it?" I was still like this. Hmm. Cause I knew that's another one. No, that ain't shit. That's yeah. what I always said. No, no. I always know it's coming down. Yeah, I yeah. always felt that way. I met every star, hung out with damn every star you can think of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it's not one, just. But 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 met. But 
hung out. But OG, it's different from hanging out with a motherfucker and then working with someone. You no, absolutely. I mean? That's that's yeah. a whole different type of thing. Yeah. So to be able to know that you made it to that to that level to where you're sharing the screen with these people who at that point their careers could be, hey, listen, be further I can, ahead. I'm at that not time. down. I'm not mm -hmm. I am hundred percent blessed. Everything that I've done or accomplished. I don't think hey, it was me. I think it, it was by me. I think it was done through me, but yeah, I think it was sure. by God. For sure. hundred percent. He took Absolutely. care of me and, and he brought me to where I am now. I don't take credit from him. I think it was done through me, Absolutely. but it was done by him because Absolutely. there are people just as talented, not even more talented than yep. I am. And, and I think that God protects where God directs. And I think you bring a child up. And because when I was in Skid Row, it was the closest I'd ever been to God because I promise you, I was sleeping behind the bus station in the beginning because it was the only place I knew. Mm -hmm. Every day, I, and you know, you see people walking on the street like, hey, come on, come on stop, stop. You, know, you think they're crazy. Mm -hmm. Literally, I would get up and go, hey, good morning. Um, and literally, I promise you, just like I was telling my friends then, I had that relationship. He was, I really talked to God. Mm -hmm. I really depended on him. I really felt him there. I was like, just like he was a best friend, I might've been crazy. You know, mm -hmm. you know, people might think I'm crazy down mm -hmm. the street. I was like, where am I gonna eat today? You know, mm -hmm. and I would be talking to him. I wouldn't be just saying it. I literally had the closest relationship. But if I had not known about that relationship, mm -hmm. you know, if I had been brought up to yeah. know about that relationship, I wouldn't be able to draw. Did on you it. grow up in a church? Hundred percent. PK. Okay. My grandparents, my grandfather's the uh, pastor of the church. Okay. We owned the church. It was right next door okay. and all of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had to sing in a choir even after I graduated. Oh, I had wow. to be in the house. Okay. That makes that's sense. Like 11. So that's and why you have that spiritual foundation. Okay. Have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you feel like that's the that's the main thing that got you through all of the BS uh, that comes with it. A hundred percent, brother. So much, uh -huh. so many things could have happened to me when I was yeah. on Skid Row. Hell yeah. So many things. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, and I can tell you, I, I got here in October, mm -hmm. November, December. I was walking around downtown, and this is this is the power of God. And I come from a big family, and and Wilson, where I'm from. And my home, fire house, we didn't get beatings around Christmas because people were home. It was the happiest time. You got all the fruit yeah. and candy you want. So it was a happy time. And I remember the Skid Row friends that I had met, met walking, Gary, KK, <clears throat> Sam, and Carlos. And I remember I was walking behind them because I was smaller and starting to affect me right now. And mm -hmm. I remember I was so sad. And I remember verbatim, I said, dear God, please, 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 you can't let it be like this. Five minutes, 12. Soon as I open my eyes now, they're walking in front of me on a crowded street downtown LA, right in front of the Greyhound bus. I'm sorry, the, the, the trailway, the, the, yeah, the bus station. Uh, I'm not sorry, the train station. Mm -hmm. Six of Main is the bus station, train station. So you know what kind of people mm -hmm. hang around the train station. And I'm watching them because I want them to see me crying. So I see them all talking like this, with their heads like this. And soon as I open my eyes, there's $180 on the sidewalk in front of me, which I know they passed up and it's mm -hmm. rolled up like this, mm -hmm. all 20, so I had to be like this. There's no way they could not have seen it. Mm -hmm. There's no way all four of them would have walked over that thing $100 and it's sitting right there when I open my eyes. Mm -hmm. Go to the movie theater, buy everybody food, we get food and that. And I, now, when I come out by two in the morning, uh, now I'm walking like this, I'm all, now I'm happy and stuff. I got money pie, we done ate. And, yeah. and, and I walk up and this is down Broadway where everything is closed. And I'm like, hey, hey, look. And there's a huge gift. Everything's closed. A gift sitting on the counter, all in white with a big white bow. And I get it. And I was like, whoa, somebody left their gift. This white couple passed by. I said, well, it's yours now. And I went, whoa, now I got a gift and $180. In the entire seven, 16 years of living in North Carolina, I think every Christmas we gift we ever got would have added up to $180. If wow. That. wow. <laughs> what was the gift? Uh, Old Spice cologne and the soap and the spray and all that <laughs> <Okay>. stuff. Okay. <laughs> you still wear Old Spice? I got it in the house right now. <laughs> to this day, I keep Old Spice. That's yeah, right. That's dope. Now, that had to be God, yeah. man. It had to be. Absolutely. It had to be. Man. So your spiritual foundation kept you going. Oh, absolutely. Let God. me ask you, do you, ever, do you ever go back? Do you ever give back to Skid Row and Homeless? Oh. Are you involved with that? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. I have I did a, for a long time when Sparks was on the TV show, mm -hmm. Sparks, we did a thing called Sparks of Hope, mm -hmm. where we had, uh, we have a big thing for, they let us close down mm -hmm. the entire uh, street in front of the, U the Union Rescue Mission. Mm -hmm. We had all the celebrities come and you don't even have to get out of your car. We had all the celebrities walk out to the car and get the food from the people personally, mm -hmm. take photos and all of that stuff. We did that for years, still donate to the Union Rescue nice. Mission. Nice. And, and um, I, I think the Union Rescue Mission saved my life. Wow, wow, that's, yeah, that's a testimony, bro. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for so, sure. 
now you coming up out of the 80s and you're still a working actor. Now, at this point, you in Hollywood, what, shit, damn near 10 years, eight, nine years or so. Um, did Sparks come before Martin? Your appearance Martin, Martin? came. Or Martin came first? Ah, mm, shit. Bro, you're asking somebody. I don't know. He, All he, right. So. <laughs> one of them. I think, I think. Sparks came first. Really? Sparks, I, Sparks says 96 to 98. And what no, did, so Martin. Martin came Martin first. Martin was what? Early 90s. Uh, living 93, single. 93, 94, 95. Yeah. So Martin was first. Martin. Okay. So I have to say it. I got it. Let me do it one time. Pretty Ricky, what they call him. No, you got to look at the camera and say it. My can't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to say Pretty Ricky. Pretty Ricky, what they call him. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Pretty Ricky. Pretty Ricky. No, Hi. no. Ricky Fontaine. Ricky Fontaine. <laughs> How did you come across, uh, come about getting that role? I went in an audition. Martin. Really? Yeah, I went in an audition for it. They said, got a, a, a role for you on Martin. I said, all right, well, let me. I actually had an, a, another audition. That one came in. And I was like, what is There's a one scene. I was like, oh, let me see it. Yeah. And I remember there being a lot of people. And I'm like, shit. Uh -huh. I got to get to the other audition. And like, people in the line. And then, then she, I was like, what is it? She came out and said, hey, anybody ready? I said, I'm ready. She said, didn't you just get it? I said, yeah, I know. I know. I'm good. I'm ready to go. I want to do it right now. So I went in. They said, listen, man, this is that. Uh, just be yourself. I said, really? So don't worry about this? Yeah, okay. Well, fuck it. Throw it away. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And walked out and then they called me in the car before I got home. Damn. And so all those guys still auditioned for nothing. Wow. Had you already done TV prior to that? You had, because you'd been on like Amen. And Fresh, yeah, 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 Fresh yeah, yeah, Prince yeah, yeah, was two yeah, yeah. years oh, yeah. earlier. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Which one? Fresh Prince was two years yeah. earlier. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'd already done it. Okay. Okay. So what was that? What was your experience like working with Martin? I love Martin. Time. Martin was awesome. And like you said, Martin, some of the stuff I even said in there, I was ad libbing. Mm -hmm. Like all, all your gargling, all that. Yeah. You go to the bathroom, all, all that stuff. Martin always lets you go for it because Martin always know. Yeah. He gonna come right over the top. Right. And so I said, the eye line of thing, you know, all that. Yeah, Martin yeah, yeah, always the eye line know, shit was, yeah. Even with the girl, that, <laughs> I just watched it again last night. Yeah. The, uh, the girl, he wanted to stop him with the big dogs when they want to have their, their little um, a baby shower at the house. Yeah. I, know, I, can, I can tell that was when he said, yeah. And that's why your face sharp in the mind. I, I know that was one of those. <laughs> yeah. So Martin always lets you go for it because Martin is so quick, so funny, so good, mm -hmm. so amazing. He's yeah. one of those people, I don't give, like, Mike Tyson back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Do, I, shoot your best shot. <laughs> and he gonna come right over the top and bring the house down. So I know that you're a, a, a actor, you know, across the board, but would you consider yourself more of a character actor or a comedic actor? No, I'm an actor, period. Just actor, yeah, period. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you I've, think is your strength? Cause I don't think I've ever really seen you in drama. Well, I haven't. My first tour of duty was uh, I, yeah, total I don't drama. Remember total total duty. drama, I got yeah. first nomination was, was that. Uh, best uh, actor in a drama series for um, tour of duty. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think that was BET or uh, 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 Emmy, one of those. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. But I don't ironically, know ever but most of your your biggest work has been comedy. Would you say? Yes. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. But I think uh, 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 family business is four years now, and that's all drama. Right. right but right, even when right. I do drama, there's a way of injecting comedy. So, mm -hmm. which is hard to do. But mm -hmm. I mean, I'm an expert at it. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, very few people can do that. Yeah. Like, but you have to be able to pull it in and pull it back. I yeah. think if you ask me, I would say even. Mm -hmm. I say even, mm -hmm. honestly. So how does you ask anybody else? They can say comedy because they seem more comedy exactly. than anything. Exactly. Else. How 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 did Sparks come uh, come about? Because I know that that was big. I mean, to have your own fucking show. You it know, wasn't what I mean? my own show. Sparks wasn't no. Spark. I, I was on. A, I was. I, I actually didn't even get called in for the Sparks audition. The uh -huh. casting director at the time said I wasn't right for it. I was told. Okay. And uh, I guess the producer, the executive producer, Ed Weinberger, has seen me on something on the airplane back. Okay. And he had him bring me in. And I just came from something big. Uh, and that was just that day. And I had to rush over there when they were doing the screen test. So they had all auditioned one, two, and three, mm -hmm. and four, and five times for the network, the studio, and all of that, for the studio and all of that. Mm -hmm. I had, I was just there. And they was like, okay, what is it? I didn't even know what it was. They said, it's a lawyer show. Mm -hmm. Robin Givens and James Avery. I was like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Robin Givens and James Avery. I thought it was a drama. Mm -hmm. Robin Gibbons and Jane Raven, the lawyer show. Right. So, okay. So then uh, Ed Weinberg was there, and then they had the studio, not the net regular network. Mm -hmm. Ed Weinberg said, I'm not bringing my people to no room at no network and have them stand there and do it, and you're not going to get a good representation of how they do the scene. Mm -hmm. Meet me at the Raleigh Studios. Everybody in the damn network, he was that powerful. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, He created the Cosby Show, Cheers, Taxi, Mary Tyler mm -hmm. Moore, all the shows. So they did it. So we go in there, I'm like, what is going on? It was like, okay. What's your name? Terrence Howard. What's your name? Miguel. Okay, you guys go together, work on it, and they put everybody together. 
Okay. So then we get ready to go in. So I hear guys, listen to me. And they were in the audience and they had to stay set up and five, four, the desk and everything. I've never seen an audition like this. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, right? And Ed said, listen to me. Don't worry about the lion. Just go in there and be funny. Knock them dead. I said, okay, so we don't, we're not committed to these lions. He said, yeah. I said, Psh, let's go. Yeah. So we went in there and nigga, I had that fucking network just rolling. I was making the shit up, flipping shit. Yeah. I walked out and Terrence Howard said, man, good luck, bro. Yeah. Good luck, man. I said, what's wrong? He said, man, I messed up all my lines, man. I said, dude, listen to me, stop. I'll see you on the set Monday. They were laughing so hard at my shit, they never even heard you fuck up. I'll see you Monday. And I walked out, he was there on Monday. But he, what happened was, I mean, that was his first TV show, so he, didn't yeah. really, he hadn't done yeah. it. So what he didn't realize, which I did was, Greg, and if you watch Spark, he was, the, he was like, uh, uh, what you call on uh, Two and a Half Men. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, not not Charlie Delman. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, like, he, he was like he was like, no Max. He he was that brother. Yeah. So while we were doing it, every time I would see him go, and I see I see that he was yeah. bumming. He was getting yeah. ready to fuck. I was like, no, 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 come on, so funny as fuck. Yeah. So they would laugh and bring us back. So he did, but he thought, but I used it. Right. So now they think those two guys are fucking perfect. He is exactly Greg. I, 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 he is Greg. He yeah. can't get it out. He, da, 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 da. And then yeah. I would kind of finish his line yeah. in a way that they would understand what he meant. He was supposed to say, da, da, da. and right. and they, I knew they were going to pick him yeah. because that was the chemistry they were looking for. Mm. And, then, and then it was what, wow. what do you what do you think you excel at? Like uh, the improv and, and making the characters your own, or like you I, always got to make that character your own. And and and, and if if the, if the director and producers are smart. They will let you go in there and put it in your way. I was on the the, the uh, spinoff of uh, of Joey, for a uh, friend spinoff Joey, and and the second season. And I remember saying this show will never ever go past the season. And then and, and it was like, why? I was like, okay, because it was like this. The writers of that show, actually, I asked to be let off that show five shows early at forty five thousand episodes, and they agreed. So bye, keep your money. Wow. Uh, um, because. For instance, they gave me lines. They didn't know how to write for a black person, first of all. They gave me lines and they wanted me to make it funny. It's okay. So when they when they when you know on camera block day when all the sound and the light and then the camera guys there, I'm like, dude, watch this, watch this. Saying the same thing they got wrote, but letting me flip it and dip it my way. Mm -hmm. Brought the house down. They damn near dropped the microphones and cameras laughing for 15, 20 minutes. Then you go to the writer and say, okay, see? So what? What do you think? And they're like this. <laughs> mm. Let's just let's just keep it the way it was. Wow. Every joke. That Hollywood bullshit. That man. Hollywood when you got yeah. producers and 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 and, 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 and that think they know more funny than mm -hmm. the person that you hire and they won't let you bring it, it's never gonna work. And it was counseled exactly like what I said. If mm. they'd have let us do our thing, mm -hmm. it could still be on. Right. How could you say no when everybody rolling and rolling just the same line just dipped it? Because yeah. you'll Ego. Ego yeah. didn't write it that way. It was yeah. ignorance. Wow. Ignorance. But you was able to roll on Sparks, though. Yeah, Sparks. Yeah. Ed Weinberger was different. Yeah. Ed Weinberger was like this. If that same writer or producer had been on Ed Weinberger's set, he would have been fired or thrown off the set and never to return. Wow. We had writers that came on the set and told actors to say what is in the script, and Ed Weinberger said, who said that? Who said that? And they were like this. <laughs> who said as of today, no writers are ever allowed on the set until we do a run through. And that was for three years. Wow. What the hell do you mean say what's in the script? The script is a, is a blueprint. Let right. them do their thing. Right. And that's why we were <laughs> killing on that show. Right. And every show that's good, producers will do that. I, I Any agree. show that they don't do that, it won't make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I agree. You got to let them do it. And they were horrible. Right. Yeah, Ed Weinberger said, just do your thing. Is there <laughs> ever an experience? All right, here's, here's the flip of the question, though. Is there ever someone who's just written so good that like you, you just read it right off the script because it's like, oh no there are some script I think every uh, uh, now but you don't know that because like I think if I was to just do if you were to give me and this is what you should think about give me every episode script of two and a half men just let me do it with somebody else Terrence Howard mm -hmm. I promise you we would break every freaking rating record of the one that you got out right now. The same scripts, mm -hmm. same scripts. I'm gonna flip it, dip it, and kill that the same line. I don't know if some of the stuff Charlie said. We don't know if it was ad libs. Right. 
That's true. But if it was, if if because that's one of my favorite shows, one of the best written shows in history. That and uh, everybody love Raymond. Mm -hmm. Now, and I, we, we don't know if they add them. You say, man, that show's so well written. Maybe it's just on the page. Sometimes it is on the page, but if it isn't on the page, then I mean, if it's on the page, which is rare, but there's a lot of time, it's really there. It just depends on how you deliver yeah, it. Some people say I can, I can curb and Seinfeld. They say a lot of that's on the page. Yes, yeah. If it's yeah. on the page, it's easier to do. Let but, me ask you this: the flip side of his flip side. Have you ever <laughs> flipped it against a writer? What a writer put on the page and what you did didn't work. Okay, ninety nine point nine percent of the time they're all happy because mm -hmm. they get credit. They think people don't know if he did that. And they think mm -hmm. they wrote and they're gonna get credit. Nine times they be like, "What did he say? What did he say?" Because the place <laughs> is coming down. Right. What did he say? What did he say? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> and they they like it because they know mm -hmm. they're gonna get the credit for it. Mm -hmm. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Weinberger did have a rule. And the last three shows, I can tell you this. One of the rules after the first season was nobody, nobody can ad lib except Miguel Nunez. I've had that on two or three shows. Because mm. most people don't know how they think because I do it, they can just mm -hmm. jump and do it. And they think, and they're always add just a beat. And always, there's a rhythm, there's a flow and a rhythm to comedy. Mm -hmm. If you throw it in there, it's got to fall in the rhythm. Most people throw it in there, hey, what the fuck? No, nope, it fucked up the whole rhythm of the beat in the moment. Mm -hmm. So you got to be able to know how to ad lib, and that's what people don't know how to do. But <laughs> I remember one time we went to Ed Weinberger, and, and most people work with Ed Weinberger except me. If you say his name to most people who work with him on a, on past shows, hey, hey Ed Weinberger, what? what, what? <laughs> but Ed Weinberger is like this. All right, move that over there like that, because he knows what he wants. Move that over there like that, genius. And me and Rob, I said, Robin, what if we go? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. She goes, okay, let's ask Ed. So we walked out. I said, Ed. He said, yeah, what? What? I said, Ed, listen, I want to try this. He's all right, all right, all right, go ahead, tell me. All right, no, no, put it on that side. Okay, so I'm gonna little bit of a 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 even at the, and this is unheard of in this business, at the table read, at the very first table read, when Ed Weinberger, the biggest writer in the history of the business, genius, wrote the script, you're still allowed. If you come in there, like me, I would go through it all night and go, and you do it at the table read, ah, ha, ha, you see Ed at the thing going like this, right? <laughs> and you could try anything, anybody. Right? And he'll go back. Yeah. So he'll put an X by it, that means go back to where it was. One rule. If you change something here and you and, 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 and you come up with something at the table read, if it's not in the script the next day, let it go. Mm. I don't want to hear it no more. That mm -hmm. was his rule. Okay. So I said, Robert, come on, let's just do it. Ed, Ed, come on. He wasn't even listening to us yesterday. You saw him going, no, 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 no. He didn't even really hear us. She said, okay, all right. So the audience is there, and you know, I, I can get a laugh anytime I want on Spark. Yeah. I, I can grab an audience and, and, and hold them as long as I want, make them laugh as long as I want, whenever I want. I don't give a damn if it's a funeral scene, whatever I want, right? <laughs> so I go in there and I was like, we're doing a scene, the audience is there, five, four, three, two, eight, eight, and we shooting it. No, no, no. And then I go, but okay, wait, 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 wait. crickets. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never been afraid of air before in my life. <laughs> Cricket. I look at Robin, she walks away. And I'm like this. <laughs> it comes out. He said, okay. He won't get mad at me because, you know. He said, all right. You came to me on Tuesday. It's about 3.30. I was talking to John, da-da-da, and da-da-da. We were relocating the da-da-da. You asked me if it wasn't funny. I told you it wasn't funny then. <laughs> and it wasn't funny then. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all he said. Yeah. Did you no, but he embarrassed me because he all the folks there, you know, they go, eh, and then he while 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 it didn't say cut, while they were like, is this cricket? He walked into the shot. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh, it. Oh shit. I love it. So awesome. He subtly put you that on the was, spot. <laughs> yeah. But 99.99.99% of the time, and that just never happened. That was the only time in yeah. my life I did an ad lib that didn't work. Wow. Don't be scared was that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. From life. Which we about to, yeah. That's, that was, I was just finna, that well, was, no, actually I was about to go into, so yeah, we gonna get to life. We gotta talk about that, but Juana Man. Yeah. We gonna, that, skip, we gonna skip over and we, but you know my first movie that I, what? Street Fighter. 
Now, yeah. For me, for me, because I, I was born in 81. I love Street Fighter, man. I was born that. in 81. He was DJ, and I was, uh -huh. you know, yeah. Street Fighter is like a, a late 80s, early yeah. 90s game. So when it came out, and that's also Jean Claude Van Damme's like yeah. era. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. That was his. That was his man. Era. Blood sport, yeah. kickboxer. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was oh, a man. Yeah. He was a man yeah. then. And then yeah. Street Fighter came out. And I remember him as DJ. Like I love that. We shot that off the coast of Brisbane, Australia. Uh -huh. uh, was that Warner Brothers? Yeah, I think that was the Warner Brothers studio mm -hmm. in, in uh, Australia. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Did you have to train? It's a cult classic. Yeah, I trained. I was. Uh -huh. I, if you look at the, the, the Street Fighter, the PlayStation Street Fighter game, mm -hmm. that's me in it. That's not like little. The, we had to work. My body looked. As ripped as any guy you can find on the internet, mm -hmm. I was blown up because we had to work out all day long, every day. Do the two hundred set up this? We had to do it. Mm -hmm. He said, "No, we want to blow this up." And I was like, "Oh my god, I have never had a body like that. Every <laughs> ab, every mm -hmm. chest, everything." Mm -hmm. And then they put oil on us, and we had to go into this big room with green screen, mm -hmm. and we had to do. I had to do every move DJ could do. And when I couldn't lift my leg up, they put this rope on and go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, oh, I got it. <laughs> and we had to do it. So it's actually me in there, but man, it was awesome. And I remember the 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 um um I was sensei for our training, mm -hmm. uh Benny the Jet. I remember him telling me one time, let me tell you something. These other street fighters, they couldn't even afford me if they had to, if they had to pay. And Warner Brothers, I mean and, and, and Universal is paying for everything. And they won't even show up. I was there every freaking day. I wanted to know every. And when I wow. came back, I would. When I first came back from doing Street Fighter for six months, I literally went to every part and I said, "Here, one, two, three, four, five people. I give you a hundred dollars. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, I give two hundred dollars. I want you to do everything you can to take me down. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, they couldn't. Oh, you I was knew in so that much. Zone. Oh, you bro, that... <laughs> I knew everything back then. I, I could do like this and stop. I knew. They taught us how to do defense. It's all about going with the momentum of their yeah. throws. Yeah. Oh, because he's like a cowboy. I was fucking yeah. people up. Did you stick with it? <laughs> no, I should have. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So Capcom, Capcom is a yeah. big, uh, they're a big client here. Oh, You'll really? see Street Fighter stuff out there. Yeah, oh, yeah. But Capcom, that's there. who produced yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But... They gave us everything. They gave us um, uh, 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 penthouses, uh, 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 condos in the building that, that no nobody could live there unless you made over a million. Mm, and it was yeah. the size of this building. Limousines every time we moved. Our, 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 uh, the whole floor was ours, but in, in the room on the other side, they had a security for each person, a driver for each person. They gave us yeah, It's a cult classic. It's one of yeah. those movies that's just gone down in yeah. history like, oh, that's And, and, and Raul Julia was a jewel, man. He was an awesome guy. Yeah, dope, dope. So yeah. I want to ask you something. Uh, based on the fact that you played a lot of different characters, um, but going into Joanna Man and 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 obviously even Life, where you're playing Life, you're playing a homosexual, um, and Joanna Man, you know, you're wearing the dress, the proverbial dress, and all of that. What is your take on you know the people? People thinking in general, there's this conspiracy to, to demasculate. De yes, I, I just had yes. this conversation. Yeah. Well, listen to me. I don't know. If there's some conspiracy to demasculate, man. Mm -hmm. I think it's just the way society is going. And I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't wear a dress, anything out mm -hmm. on a uh, red carpet, anything. Uh, I played a, a, a gay guy in life mm -hmm. who dealt with some issues of being in there and why he was there and all mm -hmm. of that stuff. And matter of fact, that was a choice by me because I remember when they gave us the script, they said. Eddie was a friend of mine. Which one of these characters, uh, 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 Brian Grace, who would you like to play? Mm -hmm. So they gave me a choice. I looked for the one that had the deepest, the de you know, the deepest part, what mm -hmm. I could do the most with. Mm -hmm. I could bring some heart to this guy and give him a reason. Because the entire speech about him going home wasn't in the script. I added that. Wow. That was okay. an ad lib. Ad lib from top to bottom. One the one take with and you it, and Eddie yeah. talking on the Because you remember yeah. the, the big guy he turned and he turned and he Tell walked. Tell yeah. yeah, and he turned uh -huh. and he faded away. Yep. That was me running across the gun line and mm -hmm. fading away. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wait, he's supposed to be, you can just kill him. How are you supposed to know? And the director said, what are you mm -hmm. talking about, Miguel? I'm not a writer. You should have brought that up weeks ago. We're going to shoot this day. Yeah. I'm like, but he have a reason. Well, you tell us a reason. Oh, come on, let's go. Let's go. Shoot. Shoot. What is it? And a whole speech I made it right there. Eddie rolled with it, pulled out the call sheet. That was a call sheet, no letter. Wow. <laughs> but so that was an ad lib, the note you don't yeah, be scared. All that. All that yeah. was an ad lib. I just made that up because Martin came up and it was just, <laughs> what am I going to do? Yeah. And, um, but um, what was I telling you? Uh, we were talking about the demasculation of- Yeah, uh, yeah, but, yeah. but, 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 and so I, I felt, I asked for that role because I just felt it it could be deeper. And it was probably mm -hmm. one of the most memorable ones in there actually. Absolutely. Outside of the rest of them. Absolutely. And that's why I chose that role. And, 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 and Joanna Man was just fun. Joanna yeah. Man was a guy dressing up as a, as a woman to get girls. Yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah. But, so what was that set like? I mean, because again, like Harlem Nights here, you have Eddie, you got Martin, you have Bernie Mac. You know, that was 
awesome. That was one of the, the most fun shoots of all time. Yeah. I can I mean, imagine. We were out there playing was, horseshoes imagine, for real. I can imagine we were it, for was, money. it was going on. It oh, was, man, it was, it was so much fun. It was so yeah. many times where while you're doing your shots over here, uh -huh. you, know, you remember that little a place where we were all supposed to be, the bunk area with the yeah. bunk room? Uh -huh. That's where everybody been. You can hear them in and laugh. Come on, quiet. Because you <laughs> know it's so much fun yeah. going on there. You can't wait to get your scene over to go back in there. <laughs> it was really a lot of fun. But it was yeah. hard, though, because we were way the hell out, and it was hella hot. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you something. You coming from, you know, I would say the old school uh, in terms of comedic acting and all of that. Uh, what is your thought on social media and social media comics compared to what you know as as traditional? What do you mean you know? social? Listen to me. Mm -hmm. my, my, my comment is this. Everybody do whatever the hell you social media, media, mm -hmm. social. There mm -hmm. are some talented people on social media. All they've done is created a different avenue and a different revenue stream for mm -hmm. other. Nobody should be hating on somebody else. I agree. You know what I'm I saying? Agree. Listen, I don't give a damn social media, uh, uh, the regular route. Mm -hmm. No one should be hating on anybody for what they're doing. Everybody should be able to achieve on any level that they can maneuver I agree. and manipulate and make happen for themselves. Period. The reason I ask, because, you know, even with rap in the hip hop community, there's always somewhat of a disconnect between the generations. You know, the older people are always saying, oh, that ain't how we do it. That ain't how we did it. That ain't real. You know, so I was curious. I, 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 but listen, exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. that, ain't how we did it. that ain't how we did it. That's how you did it. This is the new mm -hmm. generation. This is not our time anymore. This is not your time anymore. Right. This is their time. You're supposed to adapt to what they're doing now. I like I all agree. new music. I, I love agree. it. So, you know, you got to don't blame them because it ain't what you you to hear. Then put on I some agree. headphones and play your old shit. I agree. So I want to <laughs> ask. Real. That's the real shit. <laughs> we talk ask, about that a lot. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. I want to ask you about a trending topic. Um, what is your thought on the whole Ari Spears and Lizzo? Uh, okay. I don't know anything about it. Please talk. Okay. To me. So, um. You know, Lizzo is very uh, confident and very vocal about her sexuality. You know, she'll go off in some thong and some sexy shit, right? She's confident uh, in her body. And so Ari Spears, who you know is a, is a comedian, he made some, actually a very disparaging remark, basically saying that, you know, she looks like the shit emoji. <laughs> and he and he said, that, you know, she has a pretty face, but basically body shaming her. Okay. So yeah. Well, now now it. she now she answered back at the American Music Awards. You know, uh, now I don't know exactly what she said, but apparently she addressed his his comments. So I mean, what what are your thoughts? My on, thoughts on this. Listen mm -hmm. to me. God made us all different shades, all different shapes, all different sizes. I I I I, I, I commend her because a mm -hmm. lot of times people can let that kind of talk mm -hmm. take them to dark places. Yeah, absolutely. You got to give her strength for being confident in for who sure. she is. I agree. Confident in herself and, and, and confident in who she is. And mm -hmm. it takes a confident woman in her situation to do what she's doing. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be knocking her for it. Right. If you don't like it, don't look. If you don't think it's good, don't watch. Right. Period. But you cannot be down on her for being confident in herself. Okay, Absolutely. and a lot of people say, well, yeah, no, she, she's, uh, uh, what was her, somebody said to me, it uh, um, uh, wasn't Ari, somebody said, yeah, but, you know, being that big is is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about that. We're not talking about We're, we're not talking exactly. about unhealthy. Exactly. We're talking about this woman's confidence yeah. and the way she laid right. out of herself, and I love it. You can see it on her face, and right. it shows. And to me, that makes a person more beautiful when they are confident in themselves, and I, I don't agree. care what they look like. I agree. Because I'm telling you right now, you can, there gonna be some some crazy ass fine, slim, beautiful women out yeah. there, yeah. and that aren't confident, and a lot of them are even committing suicide. Right. You know, this woman is confident. You know, don't body shame her. This is right. Hollywood, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, don't uh, body shame. Ton her. Of those. I don't think we should do that to each other. Mm -hmm. But I, I I don't know if he if he sees it that he's body shame. I think mm -hmm. he's a comedian trying to do a joke like comedians do. I don't know if he was like no, a body. No, he doubled down on it. What do you mean? I mean, I'm saying he said it in an interview. Right, and then when all joke, the shit kicked, at, well, he might have been trying to be a little incendiary, you know. Yeah, just, yeah, he might have like been. A joke. But what I'm saying is, when when you know social media was like, "Hey, that's not right," he doubled down on it. It wasn't like, "Oh, I was just trying to be funny. I didn't mean no harm." It oh, was okay. like, "No, no, like she do. That's what I mean." Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't even want to comment on it because I just believe body shaming is so yeah, wrong. Because I, I was agree. body shamed my whole life. 
they for call being me skinny. watermelon head because yeah. I look like a toothpick. They say I look like a toothpick, uh -huh. and if you stick a cherry on top, because uh -huh. I had because I was skin so skinny, mm -hmm. but my head was still growing, so they called me watermelon mm -hmm. head. Oh, so. <laughs> oh, gee, I, can I call? Right. Can I call you that? Today? Please don't call me watermelon. Head. <laughs> DJ gonna come out. DJ, oh no. <laughs> DJ Waterman. No, hey, I but, did. I, I and 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 not that it affect me. Uh -huh. Well, I can't say it did affect. I remember when I used to always go like I would get mad mm -hmm. because I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna I'm gonna show your ass when I become movie famous. Mm -hmm. I would always say that. Mm -hmm. That's all right. And now everybody talked about me, said all that stuff about me growing up mm -hmm. back home. Oh, I knew you were gonna do this. Oh, I knew you was gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So. So let me ask you, so what do you think has contributed to your longevity in this business? Because here you're on a new show playing, uh, what, what's the um, uh, BET, uh, what's, the, what's the name of the show? Again? Family Business. Family Business. And you play Harris? Yes, uh, Harris Grant. Harris Grant, yeah. So what do you think has contributed to your longevity? Just doing good work. Mm -hmm. Just keep knocking it out the park every single time. Try to get along with everybody you can. Mm -hmm. The only time you're going to have problems is I've ever had problems when you stop letting people uh, disrespect you, then they call you a problem. Mm -hmm. But all you're supposed to do is go there and knock it out the park every single time. I mean, mm -hmm. I've tried to do that in every job I've ever done. And somebody's going to see it no matter what. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, oh, damn, that was good. And you're going to get another job. Mm -hmm. And remember, every little job you, I've gotten a major film from one little ass stinking ass scene in a movie. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a TV series, I'm sorry, from one stinking scene in a movie. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a big ass movie from one little corny scene in a TV show. Yeah, Just knock it out the park. You never know who's watching, you never know who's winning, and just keep doing good work, period. Okay. Never giving up, Real. never let anybody tell you what is good, and never letting anybody shame you in any way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people would say, oh, you did that, that, just because of something on themselves. Absolutely. Even if it's not true. Yeah. Anytime somebody will say nothing, it just went out and like, to me, I'm you can say yeah. all that shit you want. Yeah, people I'm project, going somewhere. People project yeah. their own shortcomings. Know where you're going, have confidence yeah. in where you're going, confidence in yourself, and no matter what anybody says, it won't affect you. I period. always say, man, you put in the work. Your work will open up doors that you ain't even seen. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. That yeah. is the key. Yeah. So let me ask you this. What what would you say is one of your what would you say is one of your best movies? And then what would you say was one of your worst movies that you just kind of like, oh, my God, I cringe every time that shit come on. To me, I don't really have one. What would you say is your favorite? My favorite film? Yeah. That you've done. I would have to say Joanna Man. OK. Because there's nothing like being number one on the call sheet. Yeah. Being number one on the call sheet on a thirty five million dollar movie is like being Caesar. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally like being Caesar. Yeah. Whatever you want. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. What do you want for lunch? I, 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 let me give it that. No, no, no. You want to get You want to get it? You want to get you this? Hey, come here. Can I get you some water? It's like mm -hmm. being number one on the call sheet is nothing like it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've every project I've ever been on, I've been I feel so blessed to have done it. Mm -hmm. I, I I'd look at one with two lines just as much as I look at one with a hundred. Mm -hmm. Everything was a special to me. I don't I, I came so far to achieve it and and to me, every little job is just as important as every big job. Mm -hmm. My everything was my favorite. Uh, the least favorite thing I've ever worked on. Something you got to delete from the resume. No. Well, I can't because it's one of the something the thing I'm currently working on. But the reasons I can't, well, it falls in that category. I can't talk about right now because the show's still going on. But I will address it after the show goes off. Hold on. So we're not gonna talk about Leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> I love Leprechaun. I love. I was fucking around. You ever see Connoisseur? <laughs> yeah. You I'm see not, Connoisseur? No, nah, I know. Uh, you got killed by one. a dinosaur. Uh, I haven't seen. <laughs> you know that how many one. times I'm sitting at home at night just watching TV and I'm getting into some corny movie and watch it. And the next thing I know, I come up on the screen <laughs> at least ten times a year. <laughs> Don't remember anything about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you so 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 I'm hearing you correctly. You're saying that your least favorite would be something you're currently doing. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, that, what he got to spend the block then to come back? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. no. When I'm when my run is over, man, then we'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah, you got to spend the block, come back to the show and Shit, talk about 100%. it. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You so, better catch me because there's gonna be a <laughs> lot of blocks wanting to hit this. Hey, I want to ask you though. So you're 62 right three 63 
what is the secret, bro? What what? How are you staying so youthful and so young and so vibrant? A lot of it is, well, I've been using something which I've never tell anybody what I use mm -hmm. for like at least 10, 15 years. I'm actually, I got with somebody who called me who I've been working with for at least four years. We're going to put together something. And I can show you because I've researched everything mm -hmm. to do with my, because my daughter, she has a facial business in Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. 421 North Rodeo Drive, uh, Artesian <laughs> Skincare, the number one on the freaking planet. Mm hmm yeah, she had her clients are every A list. If, you, if I told you to name ten A listers, they're her clients. If I told you to name ten top social media person, they're her clients. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Nice. Congratulations. Top. Yeah. But we're gonna work on something that I promise you we'll, we'll show you. And it's not just that. It's your. I could show anybody. Your internal clock doesn't. Your internal clock. It doesn't have a watch. Right. How does it know? Mm-hmm. You decide. A lot of the times people see the youth, it's the energy first. Mm -hmm. I, I react exactly, speak exactly, talk exactly, get excited exactly, uh, 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 move and react exactly, not even a smidget differently than I did 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 40 years ago. Not even, I get excited about the same shit as I did 30 years ago. If I was sitting somewhere and let's just say there was 20 kids here and 20 adults here and uh, a, 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 a rabbit, something come out of the woods or, or something came in, and all the kids are running away, I would be running with them and all the world would say, hey, hey y'all stop, y'all be gal, gal. I would be that one, they would call me back with the kids. I have the same reactions, the same everything. Your internal clock does, I'll give you an example. Let's just say you got this guy standing right here. And above him, there's a sign that says old. And there's another guy standing over there that says young. And above them, there are three knobs, three buttons, light switches, on and off. Well, you could probably see me if I did this. I'm standing here. Above me is old. On, 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 off, off, off. Over here is young. On, 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 off, off, off. I'll give you an example. My brother lives with me. Ten years younger than me. Everybody think he's my grandfather. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Now, he, I hide in the closet. Mm -hmm. Every time I hear him come out, I hide in the closet. He come out, no! what the hell wrong with you? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> Fuck you, how old are you, you? Right? So now, <laughs> cut to inside the internal clock department. The supervisor comes, hey, these two guys, what just happened? So he just jumped out of the clock and, 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 and jumped out of the closet and scared him. Okay, wait, stop. First of all, who are we talking about? Let's talk about Miguel. He jumped out of the closet. All right, is that something a old person does or a young person? I'm asking you two. Yeah, oh, that's asking, young. That's young. Thank you. It's young. Yeah. So now this old, my old turn clock turns that button off. The young guy turns it on. Okay, does he laugh and joke and his energy up and down all the time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Old people don't do that. That's off. Right. Young folks turn it. All my young shit is turned on. All my old shit is turned off. Gotcha. Yeah. My gotcha. brother. Who's way younger than me and move around like this? His old, his yeah. old shit turned off. All his old shit is turned off. Yeah. All his young shit is turned off. You decide. Right. Yeah. You decide. Mm -hmm. And it'll work. I ain't been sick in 30 years. Right. Except COVID. And I had that without the flu and that shit didn't know I had it. Yeah. I don't get sick, period. So you're saying this is more so mentally. 100%. You yeah. can change everything. Yeah, I agree. I got my arm broke, didn't go get it fixed. Damn. Figured it'll heal it, 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 it by itself and it did after four months of pain, but yeah. <laughs> had a, 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 a fractured jaw. Suffered through it for about six months with my jaw like that. It'll be healed by itself. Damn. <laughs> okay. I promise I, you. I'm curious. How'd your jaw get fractured? Oh, my God. Girl hit you? Hell no. Okay. <laughs> this was when I was young. I didn't know it hit. Uh -huh. I didn't know it was fractured. The first time, uh, my first time I ever went to the dentist. We were so poor in North Carolina. I get in the car, go to my grandma to the dentist, and I think we're going downtown to the dentist. She goes down this old dirt country road, down a long country dirt road. Go into this old house. And we go in the back door, and there's an old ass white man come out with his robe on and shit. About 90 something years old. Jump a little head. My grandmother, he was a, the doctor that did all the black folks dentist yeah. in, the in, the, in, the, in the in the city. That, you know retired and was doing it out of his bathroom for money. 
Damn. So he takes me in the bathroom, and all of this is say, and all of this is it. Uh huh. And and he goes, and she goes, don't you say nothing, what you did it. And my grandma was mean as fuck. Okay, so like this. Okay, okay. So I, I was looking, I'm about 11 or 12, and I'm sitting there like that, and he comes in, and open your, open your mouth. And he sticks his hand in my mouth like that. I'm looking at my grandma, he says, oh yeah, yeah, that, that one's bad. He turns around, he grabs a pair of pliers, and just goes, and just pulls that long tooth all the way up like that. With no anesthesia? Nothing, and okay. the blood just pouring out, and I literally, almost fainted, it was hurting so freaking bad. Mm. And he just grabbed some cotton towels, stuck it down, he got, hey, I'm gonna get this one too. And next thing I know, I woke up in the car. This one ended up healing. This one took months and months to heal. It wasn't until I came to California later on when I really had money and went to get a dentist. He said, so how did you fracture your jaw? I, said, I ain't never fractured my jaw, yes you did. Damn. Wow. In the bathroom, North yep. Carolina. <laughs> North Carolina, some old wow. ass white man. Just pulled it, dude. And no anesthesia. Not he just, just like, fainted. Oh! I, I did. On that shit. <laughs> so, and then I was like, and I looked at my grandma and she like this. And I'm like, I was actually more scared of her than the pain, but yeah. Damn. That's what happened. Damn, OG, what shit. You didn't have, man, you didn't had an awesome life thus far. Uh, what, what, I had, go ahead. No. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I said, if I had lived my life, I would live it probably the same because I, the way I, I was raised in North Carolina, we would swim in the, in the, in the lakes and the woods. We would get up on Saturday to think, see me in Hollywood and the places mm -hmm. I've been and the people I've been with and, and, and homes I've been with more millionaires and mansions and private jets and 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 and, and, and million dollar vacations mm -hmm. and 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 a twenty million dollar yachts than anybody. Mm -hmm. And to come from Wilson, North Carolina, yeah. is, is to me is a miracle. Let me ask you something. This is my last question, brother. Um, was it everything that you thought it to be? Yes, mm -hmm. it was everything I thought it to be. Mm -hmm. 100%. Since the day you was writing Hollywood on everything. If I had to live my life over, the only thing I would change would be. That dentist trip. <laughs> and I actually <laughs> definitely changed that. But uh, the ass whoopings we used to get growing up, that's it. Because, mm. bro, I could tell you more stories about that in Hollywood. Mm. But anyway, yeah. But that, that shape, but would you think that shaped your oh, character? 100%. And your discipline? But yeah, because yeah. Cause what I, I, like I was saying, and, and this, the, 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 the places I've been, the, the people I've been, the, the yachts mm -hmm. and all of that shit. Most people would never, that's okay to me. To me, that's, but when I grew up, we lived in North Carolina and the woods was from here to San Diego, that thick mm -hmm. in parts. Me to think, you know, you would never know sitting in somewhere the places I would be at a war mm -hmm. show or something that. I would get up on Saturday morning, rake the yard, do our chores, and we would make a little bags pack and just head straight into the woods and not come out to six o'clock. I did that damn near my half life. Wow. In the woods, swinging on the vines. And if you fall from like 30 feet up, ain't nothing gonna happen because the, the leaves on the ground were right from here to the floor because it was mm -hmm. so thick. The leaves were probably this high mm -hmm. and you just bounce. Swimming in the lakes and then you get, we, we get hungry, take your head off and we put plums, peaches, blackberries. There was lots of blackberries and, and blueberries and just mm -hmm. eat that all day. Or you go out to the thing and get a probably eight thousands of tons of, of fruit and didn't know I was eating healthy. Mm -hmm. Just that's what was free. And we'd go out and get a cucumber, big cucumber, just shook it all, those little prickles off it, salt. I ate thousands of cucumbers. Tomatoes, big ass red tomatoes, just so red. Put the tomato, ate them like apples. Mm -hmm. Probably ate 99% of my time because that's what we could eat free. Fruit mm -hmm. and vegetables. Wasn't wow. thinking about eating free fruit. I mean, healthy, it was just the way it was. Is that how you still eat? Hell no. Okay. No, I eat anything, <laughs> everything. But the yeah. problem is I can't gain weight. Yeah. Right, I can right. eat three tons of food and lose three pounds every time. Me too. I don't get it. The more I I'm eat, I lose weight. I get on yeah. the scale right now and show you. I <laughs> eat and we'll get back on the scale. I promise you I'll be less. I, listen, I got the same struggle. During during COVID, during the shutdown, I was 240. Uh, I was probably one of the few people that lost weight. I mean, yeah. every day I'm getting on the scale. By the time we came out of the quarantine, <laughs> I was like 220, 219. Really? Yeah. You didn't and eat? I was eating all kind of, yeah. Oh, I was see, posting all I kind of bullshit. That's I mean, me. I mean, volcano every other that day, was me. And pizza and all kind of shit. I can't yeah. get I remember when I was little, I used to, I used to look up a um, tapeworm because I mm -hmm. thought I had a tapeworm. <laughs> <laughs> and then I used to buy this stuff called Weight On. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah weight gainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah weight on. It was called yeah. weight on back then. <laughs> and it was the nastiest stuff you could ever taste. Nothing yeah. worked. Yeah, I got the same. We're, I, I'm I'm a skinny dude, yeah. uh, genetically. I'm an ectomorph like you, you know what I mean? But I just put the muscle on over years and eating, right. you know, but yeah, you gotta eat a lot. 
Yeah. You got to eat a lot. Because I, like I said, I was yeah. short my whole life, but mm -hmm. I'm just glad I'm black because yeah. I, I grew. Yeah. yeah. So You know so, why black people are taller, right? Mm -mm, why? Because they're Negroes. Mm. Okay. <laughs> 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 Did you just make that shit up, or is that something somebody told you? No, <laughs> and then it took me about ten seconds. To I, know, I saw you process it. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, oh, it's man. a joke. It's just a fucking joke. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm thinking joke. Nico. Okay, it's just a joke. So what, what 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 you got coming up next, brother? Not that I'm shooting. Um, I'm shooting right now uh, an amazing drama mm -hmm. called um, Cocaine Sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it's kind of like a family business on steroids. Mm -hmm. The and, funny thing about that project, I'm sorry, oh. me and Tiny were supposed to be in that. Tiny? Yep. Uh, who is Tiny going to play? Ti um, I can't remember. I can't remember. Oh, I love me and, Tiny, me and Tiny were supposed to be in that. We met with uh, the, the writer. No, not oh, her. Oh, Chardell. Chardell. We met with him. Yeah. We were supposed yeah. to be in that together. Man, I love him. Tiny, man. Yeah, Tiny, that was my brother, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying? No, no, no. Uh, um, so, um, cocaine, uh, sisters. cocaine sisters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're shooting that now. We're going to shoot 14 episodes and, uh, nice. See nice. Where it goes. All right. All right. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about a possible season five, uh, family business. So, okay. You know, I leave it up to God and I just follow him. So oh, you know. I thought that was, uh, one of the shows you were talking about, but I see if you're hopeful for a season five. Well, I'm I still hopeful for a season five. That is what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem. You trying to figure it out, huh? Uh, well, you ain't trying, figure to get, out no, more. no, I'm saying y'all trying to you trying to figure it out with them and get it together. No, I just hope it does get together. Uh -huh. I hope it works out. And if it, you know, it's, it's, but it that's is. not the show you were speaking about. Earlier. That is a show. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> that is the show. Okay. But you know, like I said, hey, it still got time to work it out. Okay. So you know, right. if it does, it does. If it don't, All I'm right. coming. Okay, OG. But hey. it's, it's a really good, I, I think the cast is amazing. Yeah. I mean, and. And you say fourth season, it. right? It's on the fourth season. We're, fourth season starts September the 1st. Okay. And it's fire. Okay. It's Who else is fire. on that show? Ernie Hudson, Valerie Pettiford, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Darren Henson. Okay. Uh, Ernie Hudson, uh -huh. uh, uh, Sean Ringo. It's just okay. Tammy Roman. She okay. She plays my, my wife. And, um, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I used. I think Tammy used to be my neighbor. I used to see her I in love the neighborhood. Tammy yeah. she is I used to see so her walking talented. around the neighborhood. I love yeah. Tammy. She's the most one of the most talented. She's a great actress. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody thought long time. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 Tammy. Yeah, mm -hmm. she is freaking killing it. Yeah, game. and yeah. she's such a good actress now. Yeah, yeah. She just improved every single year. She nice. always knocks it there. Nice. Me and her, we did a, a one of our first movies ever together. I think we. She was eighteen. I don't know mm -hmm. how old was at the time. We played nice. two homeless people in love. Wow. Wow. Uh, nice, brother. Well, listen, I ain't going to keep you, man. I yeah, just want to get, hey, I just want to give you your flowers, OG. Man, you've been around, you know what I'm saying, making us laugh, giving us quality content for what, about 40 30, years now? Years. About 40 years <laughs> now, man. So, you know, I like that jumpsuit. Oh. What did I say? Oh, man, real. Shout out to Sully Folk What I just said, I said, said yeah. See, I said, look at that, look at that. See, this is Sully Folk Q. Uh, he a homie from my, uh, of mine from Kansas City, Missouri. Look at him, he ain't saying yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, You want one? I'll hook yeah, you yeah, up. I want I'm one put just you like on. that. That's flies yeah, hell. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put you on. Man, that nigga got some serious guns. Yeah, he, did, he did the thing. He got guns, for the I show got pistols. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Yeah, man, anytime, love. We'll follow back up again, for sure. For sure, for sure. Anytime, brother, we'll do it again. All right, thank you, brother. Peace out. Miguel Nunez, Hold the Court Podcast. On the court.